welcome to another video by George's Shed and today we're going to be creating a DIY telemetry module that can read a battery's voltage. Let's get started. We'll need two NRF24 L01 modules, a USB A to B cable, a barrel jack, two Arduinos, some male to female jumper cables and some blank PCBs. You will also need a laptop, a pair of scissors, some snips, some solder and a soldering iron. Okay, so first of all we need to wire up our module to the Arduino. So, if we look on the bottom of the module, all the pins are nicely labelled for us. So, V plus uh, needs to go to 3.3 volts. And make sure that this goes to 3.3 volts and not 5 volts, because if you put it to 5 volts, it will uh, fry your module, um, which you, we obviously don't want. Okay, so... Um, SCK uh, goes to pin 13, uh, pin 12 uh, goes to MISO, pin 11 goes to MOSI, Pins uh, 9 and 10 are connected, 8 is connected to CSN, and finally pin 7 is connected to CE. Okay, so that is our ground station sorted, or the receiver. Um, so now uh, we can wire up the transmitter. So um, all the wiring for the actual module is the same, but we're going to have to add some external components because um, obviously we need some data to transmit but before we wire it up we need to wire the capacitor between 3.3 uh, volts and ground um, because when the, especially the larger modules are transmitting um, it can briefly draw a large amount of current which the Arduino can't supply so the capacitor helps to um, supply enough current so the module doesn't cut out so the, the wiring for this is exactly the same um, previously, so I'll just uh, speed that. Okay, so uh, that's the transmitter um, wired up, but um, now what we need to do is to read information uh, from our aircraft or drone whatever you want the telemetry for or even you know a car remote control car or something uh, we need to create this little module um, which we can use to read the battery voltage so uh, this is quite easy to make um, so I've done this on a bit of a, a breadboard or perf board um, but you don't need to uh, you can easily do it without that um, so first of all what I did is uh, wired in a 4 pin um, parallel connector for the battery. So the battery uh, clips clips into this and uh, so that's where we can get all our voltages from. So directly off the battery's uh, ground and 12 volt terminals I've wired this barrel jack and this is used to power the Arduino. So alternatively, you can just uh, wire those ports uh, directly to the bottom of the jack or to the power pins on the Arduino um, if you don't have a barrel jack. But they're quite easy to find and I'd recommend uh, doing it this way because then you can uh, just unplug it and plug it in whenever you need to and you can still use the Arduino for other projects. So, um, so how we read the voltage is... Uh, we need a voltage divider and that's what these uh, three um, resistors are for. So um, we have one resistor here that goes between um, ground and uh, the sense pin and then we have these two resistors that go between 12 volts and the sense pin. So this yellow cable here is at uh, the sense pin and uh, the reason we need to use a voltage divider is because the battery is 12 volts and um, if you if you've used an Arduino before, you know that the digital pins on an Arduino are only 5 volt tolerant. So if you try and put 
uh, more than 5 volts through one of the analog pins, then you're going to fry that pin or even the entire board. So we need to step down um, the voltage to a voltage that we can actually read, and this is what the voltage divider is. So I'll show the values of each of these resistors on the screen um, for you to build it yourself. Um, and also I've attached this extra ground wire to ground um, just to connect um, to the actual ground on here. Um, but if you're powering the Arduino through the battery then you don't need that. But if you're not then you do. So uh, the wiring for this is uh, really simple. So uh, the ground pin uh, obviously it goes to ground and find the pin like that and then uh, the analog uh, sense pin can go to any of the analog pins um, but in my code I'm using A2 but it doesn't really matter and uh, if you have multiple uh, batteries then you can make more of these modules or alternatively you can um, use three voltage dividers um, and then you can sense the voltage of each cell um, but I didn't do that because the total voltage of the entire battery shows you the voltage of each three just as a total so it doesn't show you if the cells are balanced but you know how well charged each of the cells typically are okay so now let's move on to the code Okay, so first of all, you're going to want to go to GitHub um, at this uh, address, so I'll put the, put the link in the description, um, and you need to download the zip file. And uh, once you've downloaded the zip file, uh, then you can go into Arduino, uh, click uh, Sketch Include Library, and then Add .zip Library. And then you need to go into downloads or wherever the thing just downloaded. And then click on uh, the zip uh, file that you downloaded. And then just click OK. And Arduino will automatically install it. Um, which is uh, really quite useful and a lot better than it used to be. So uh, now we can look at our code. So first of all we'll look at the code of the ground station or the receiver. So... There's not much code to this, um, so we're including SPI, which is how we talk to the module. Um, we're including the two uh, NRF24 libraries, and then we are telling it what address we are going to give to the um, module. So uh, you want this to be the same on all of the um, modules that you are using. Um, and you can you don't need to just have two you can have three and then as long as they've all got the same name they can all talk to each other so I like to start a start a serial because um, then I can uh, relay information to the monitor um, for debugging and uh, um, stuff like that and also for the receiver um, we want to actually see the data and because we don't have any external screen attached to the Arduino uh, we want uh, to be able to see the data so um, as I'll show in a sec it um, shows us the data on the, the serial monitor so we start our radio and then we open a pipe so they can talk to each other which is uh, the, through this address um, and here we set the power of the module um, so the first time you do this it's best to have this set to low um, to make sure the power is okay um, and then if that's okay then you can set it to high which is sort of the medium level um, and then if that still works and you want more range then you can change that to max and then it'll uh, put out the maximum power that it can so then we also want the module to start listening to uh, radio signals which is uh, quite self-explanatory so if we get a radio signal um, here we are just creating a variable called uh, text um, which in this case will actually be text it'll be um, a number that's why it's an int but um, it was called text in the original uh, example so um, I'm not going to change it so we also create this uh, value called uh, volts which is a float because we um, 
want a decimal point. So here, um, this is used for debugging. So um, this prints out a text before we divide it by a hundred, and I'll show you why we need to divide it by a hundred in a second. Um, so then we read the value that we've got, um, so text, and we also read the size of it. Um, we work out what the volts is from the signal we've got, and then we print that to the monitor uh, through here. So if I turn on the other module, uh, plug it in, then if we look at the serial monitor, we'll see here that we get our voltage, which is at 12.31 volts on my battery at the moment. Okay, so now that's uh, the ground station um, code side, so you just need to upload uh, this to your um, <coughs> ground station. And then now we will look at um, the other one, which I've called uh, drone, um, because this is obviously the one that's going to be on my drone. So, as with the other one, we uh, use these three libraries. Um, but as you can see here, we declare absolutely loads of uh, variables. So, um, <clears throat> most of these are to do with calculating the average voltage. Um, so, uh, so we've got a number of readings. So you can change this um, to how many readings you want it to take before it take, um, like how many readings you want it to average over. So in this case, it takes 30 readings and then works out the average of those 30 and prints out that. And the reason I do this is because if you don't, the analog sense pin on an Arduino isn't the best. So if you want him to read voltage quite accurately, then it, it tends to vary by a little bit. So I just like to take an average and it just smooths everything out and means you get um, a more accurate voltage. So... We've got some other integers, um, which is uh, working out. So the total of all the values and then average. So obviously the total divided by the number of readings. Uh, we also have a float volts. Um, it's a float because obviously it can be a decimal. And then we also have a string, which is called volt string. Um, and I'll explain why it's a string in a second. So we've got our input pin, which is analog2. And then I also um, create an int called timer. So as you can see here, we have the same uh, address as the previous um, code, so they can talk to each other. Um, as with the other one, we start the radio. Uh, we also open a serial. Um, we uh, open the pipe using that code, set the power to high. Um, but we also tell it to stop listening because this is the transmitter and it's going to be on the drone. We don't need it to listen to signals, we only want it to send. So we can tell it to stop listening um, so it can only send. So this is setting up um, how to work out the averages. And then in our main loop, um, this part of the code here uh, calculates uh, the average number of um, the average reading that it gets. Um, and here we can see that volts is being worked out by dividing the average by 34.5 and the reason for this is um, the analog sense pin doesn't give you a voltage on the pin it gives you a value between 0 and 123 which represents um, 0 and 5 volts so to get to work out what it originally is um, off the 12 volt battery before it went through the divider then we need to times it by um, sorry divide it by 34.5 so every um, voltage divider is slightly different because resistors although they are quite accurate they can change um, and you might use want to use different value resistors well the way you work this out is uh, instead of printing the voltage you uh, print the analog value of A1 and uh, print that to the screen and write it down and then measure the voltage of the battery using a multimeter and then divide the um, analog value by the voltage and that will give you a constant and in this case it was 34.5 um, which gives us back to our original voltage. So um, here we can see we've got in volts 100 equals volts times 100. And as you can remember on the previous code, we divide by 100. And the reason for this is that I found 
lots of trouble with trying to uh, send a float over the transmitter. So instead, I change it to an int, and because it's to two decimal places, if we times it by 100, then instead of, for example, 12.39, it'll be 1,239, and then we just divide it by 100 at the other end to get back to our actual voltage. So, um, once we've done that, uh, we serial.print transmitting and then the average, so we know what the module's trying to send, which is useful for debugging. And then, obviously, we write the value, so we send it to the other one. And then we do this. Um, what I did is because for some reason, when you um, when you first plug in the module, it takes the readings start at zero, and because it's a rolling average, um, it takes about it takes quite a few readings to get from zero to um, the actual voltage. So, for the first uh, ten seconds, I um, for the first 20 seconds, sorry, I only delay for um, one millisecond, so it prints values really quickly because we want to get up to that val the, the real value really quickly. Um, but then, because sending values really quickly uses obviously more energy, and um, on a drone, you obviously want as much power from the batteries as you can to go to the motors. So, after um, 20 seconds um, the average should have got to the real value then we um, delay for one second in between each value so it just updates the value every one second um, so we get a better voltage value that way thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe see you next time bye